Hey, good morning once again. <clears throat> this morning, we're here to talk about Earth, our part in it. You know, really it's about the love we share. Really it's about how we give and take with one another, Mother Earth, and we... Uh, helping each other along on our journey home. Helping us get through this experience we've created, we call life. You know? And sometimes it can be pretty tricky. Now you'll have to forgive me for wearing my hat this morning and the coat, because it's a little chilly here, and I'm feeling it. So I thought, well, spirits told me I could leave my hat on. And <laughs> it made that song come up. Now I'm going to be singing that all day long. You can leave your hat on. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, it's, uh, it's an amazing experience as we begin to really grasp the concept of what's going on here. You know, we start from some pretty shrunken places, you know. And of course, we all come in as babies of light, but we forget really fast as we kind of soak into the density and the darkness, you know, and the comfort that we find in the light, you know, we let it go, the consciousness of the love. And we begin to experience it from a place called need, neediness. You know, we need mother's milk. We need somebody to change our diapers. We need somebody to clothe us and keep us warm and hold us and make us feel better as we start to lose real feeling and, and feel what's around us. And that's how babies learn and grow, is by feeling. It's a very base level. So as we're babies, we're coming through this process of letting go of the love and accepting a weak substitute, which is still love. We recognize that. Our instincts take, take us to it. But it's a culture, it's a society, it's a, a, an established norm of human behavior. So gradually we accept that in our first few months, our first few years, and become what is around us another part of it. That's a normal thing. That's life adapting itself to its environment. It does that all the time. The only problem is that humans for the most part are disconnected from that environment. They don't even know what it is. You know, we live separate from it. And if the environment's there, it isn't particularly for us to enjoy it. At least that's one point of view that's pretty common here. It's for us to uh, manage, tame, bring into conformity with our needs, which seem to increase as we get older. You know, and some people need to have a house that takes a whole dang forest to build and things like that, you know. Needs can be pretty corrupted <laughs> and corrupting because you don't feel the love fully. You get a little idea of it, I think. Most people do. But you don't feel the love that you knew when you began this experience and that you'll re-experience when you complete the chore. That's the cycle of life and death. And you know when you're near death. And then you live to tell about it. That's the one thing most folks remember is feeling the love, you know, it's almost an indescribable thing, but it's when you know everything's alright, it's totally cool, I mean, it's not only about accepting yourself, it's about how much love there really is in this world, in this life. And we're not living it because we forgot it as little tiny babies. And then got really corrupted 
as we went along in it, you know? Gosh, what an experience. But that's what we're here remembering this morning. We're taking ourselves right back into that childhood in a way, but as adult people. And we're going back there to experience the truth of the heart. So it's kind of like the opposite of death in a way. It's becoming little babies again. You wonder why I call you babies all the time? Because I'm a baby myself. We all are. And that is the state of innocence, of knowing awareness, of truth founded in your heart. Unstoppable, unbreakable truth. Love. Real simple. You know, again, I point out to you, we've played a role here. That's what we're adapted into when we come into this world as babies filled with love and light and instantly are greeted with harsh darkness, for the most part. We begin right there to let it go. We accept the programming, it's feeling. See, this is how we work, it's on feeling. So because we're all interconnected and we're all the same person, then it's like the common mentality, energy as I call it, around you is what determines what you'll become, what you'll put away. So that's how we adapt into it. But how then? Can we ever, once we're so programmed, come out of it? You know, don't we have to sit here and fulfill our role, do our job, pay our bills, take care of the family, take care of, you know, those that are in need and so forth, you know? Truth is, we're already doing it, just in a different way. It's time to become conscious of that way again so these things that they're calling earth changes <laughs> are pretty much predicated from our heart we're in this boat together mother earth and we and like us she's adapted to a role She's a living, breathing person. She's conscious and aware of each and every life that lives within and upon her. She is that life. We are sky and earth, and it's all light. You see, go back to the beginning of life and remember that love. It's even love, in the most cases, that creates you, that gets you started on this physical plane, as we call it. You know? But it's not meant to be harsh anymore. It's time we let that harshness go away and fade off into the darkness someplace and to just be something else. And the only way we can do that is first by letting go everything we've done. Everything we've said to one another, true or otherwise, every little activity, good or bad, just let it be. It doesn't say get rid of it. But just let it be. Feel the love, the light inside of your heart. Let it come forward. There's resistance. Lots of resistance. You know, it's craziness. But we cling 
what is given as comfort. We cling to our way of being, that programmed way. It's something we know. It may not be truth. It may be difficult to the extreme, but it's something we know. That's what makes us clean. Because again, of the fear of the unknown. So this is why we call the process remembering. Because then it's not unknown. It's totally known. And there is no fear. See how that works? <laughs> it's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you just let go. You know what I mean? You begin to experience yourself as a deeper being. Yeah, a person with feeling. And you find out the feelings you've been feeling, for the most part, were kind of like superficial. I remember feeling that way at times in my life, and I really didn't like that feeling. You know? I really felt, ooh, what am I doing here? Why is this happening? But I couldn't stop myself from performing the role. I was conscious of it on some way, at some level, that I was just fulfilling other people's expectations of me in a subconscious way. But I could feel the phoniness of it, you know, kind of judge myself in a way. And then I would, oh my, I, I can't do that, that's not honest. And I'd back off, you know, after a bit. you got to go through it for a bit. That's the point we're all coming to. Consciousness. We're going to become. We are becoming. Not going. <laughs> we are becoming aware. Of that superficiality. As we begin to feel. The deeper feelings. You know. That's where the fear comes in. Because the fear is. You're going to have to see, your see, see yourself. Essentially as dishonest. But it's not dishonest if you're playing a role. If you care enough to try and fulfill other people's expectations of you, and sometimes those can be pretty crummy, uh, <laughs> in a loving sort of way you're doing a good thing. And when you recognize that, then you can let go of the harshness of the experience and allow yourself to feel loved again. Because in order to be loving, you've got to feel loved. You've got to know it's in you. That it's your heart. And it starts, I'm telling you, with experiencing nature. Of getting out in the wilder places of this world. Experiencing the forests, the trees, the creeks, the rivers. Spending some time there is a very important part of the beginning of your recovery into truth. I suggest that you go there and experience it. First, by yourself. I mean, if you can just take a weekend, go someplace that isn't too corrupted and where you can have some alone time. There still are those places and they're accessible from all the big cities as well as the small towns and so forth. <laughs> it's everywhere. But find your little, you know, let your heart, trust your instincts, get in your vehicle or just get on the bus, whatever. And just let it take you to the place you ought to go. Don't plan anything. Just let it come. And do this soon. Because you don't have a lot of time. But if for some reason you can't get away, there's places there in the urban corruption where you can experience the same kind of things. Parks, greenhouses, 
You know, there there is going to be a place where nature will call you. No matter your circumstances, where you're at, how you're living, what you're doing, how little time you have. You're going to take some time for this one. You're going to do it today, tomorrow, or very soon. Because this is where you begin to reconnect with your mother. You get away from the rubber tires and the asphalt highways and concrete buildings. You get yourself there in a place where you can experience nature again because that is earth and that is our creation as well as hers. I mean, we work together in this thing and try to make beauty out of everything. And guess what? Because of that, everything is beautiful. And you're going to find that out as you go through this process. And you heard me speak of making love with the Mother Earth in one of my earlier discussions. Well, the process you're going through in reconnecting with Earth, her soul, her heart, her spirit, her growth, which you are, her baby, which you are, is a process very similar to that. It's a closeness of connection that you can't even imagine yet, but it's there inside of you, and it's time to remember it. So you don't have to force yourself. You don't have to go on a vision quest and fast for three days. You can do that if you want. Sometimes that helps. But just do what your heart leads you to do. But the main thing is just get out and experience nature again. And do it as often as you can. And after you've felt this reconnection with the earth, and you feel her love rising up within you, you feel it in your blood, your bones, your heart, your consciousness and she's become a part of you again then you know you're learning to experience truth and what forms from there is simply incredible but it's all a part of reconnecting with your real self the real person that you are the one that cares and the one that knows it cares and more than that cares because it is that heart in that other person that you're having to deal with. And these difficult situations that we've been getting ourselves in with other folks for so long will begin to evaporate, disappear, and we'll be getting along a hell of a lot better. And then we can start gathering together in groups in these sacred places, in the forests and the mountains of earth and truly experiencing one another's heart again in ways that are just incredible and cannot be described because again it's all emotion of that love the love we're born in the love that creates the love we're beginning to remember and experience and this is just one aspect of it this is just getting it started now we're talking about planetary ascension here the end of death <laughs> you know it's a pretty big leap but you can conceive of it when you can feel this love when you can remember it and allow it to be a part of your heart your experience your truth let it come into you now feel the nature in you Feel the earth and the sky. Become the cosmic awareness. See that we are love. See it. Appreciate the beauty and the wonder of it. And much more of it will come to you. And you can be in the middle of the concrete jungle. And there will be nature communicating with you through her animals, plants, trees, flowers. Sometimes you'll even hear her words. 
mother speaking with the baby, giving him a little baby talk. <laughs> yeah, that's how she goes, baby. And this is where the heart leads you. And this is where you're going to go because you're already there. <laughs> Surprise! Love you guys. Next time.